Um, thank you everyone for joining us uh, for this uh, next round of uh, webinars from, from Figit. Um, this is the first of our new year series. Um, we're positioning this first one, uh, the subject uh, getting ahead of tax season um, and how digitizing um, your agri-data uh, can help take the bottlenecks out of the tax process. Uh, welcome, my name is John Gibson. I'm the General Manager for Figured, um, looking after Figured's business in both New Zealand um, and Australia. And uh, great to have you here with us. Um, and we've got a team joining me today. Um, we have Tara Broben, a Customer Success Specialist uh, based in Australia. Um, and also Andy Drinkwater, a Partner Success uh, Specialist as well. Um, Tara, in particular, might uh, be familiar uh, to a number of you. Um, she supports our figured users in Australia on a day-to-day -day basis uh, through the green chat bubble uh, that's located in the lower right-hand screen of the figured application when you log, it, log into it. Um, great to be here today, and uh, we're really looking forward to taking you through this, uh, this, this webinar. Um, if you could just click on for me, Tara, please. Um, so this uh, particular series that we're kicking off in the new year, um, there's two webinars involved in this series. Um, the first one, Getting Here to Tax Season, How Digitising Your Agri-Data Can Help Take the Bottlenecks Out of Your Tax Process. Um, the second one happens a, a week uh, from today, um, and that's uh, on the subject of evaluating long-term investment options and how we can easily help you model and advise your farmers on the, vi on the viability um, of those big uh, decisions. Um, if you could just click on for me, please, Tara. I'll just uh, tell you a little bit about what we're going to cover today. Um, so three key things that we'll be covering off in this webinar today. How we integrate with Xero and automatically make Xero data available in Figured. Uh, secondly, how Figured uses that information in a way that avoids time-consuming workarounds that might sit outside of Xero. Finally, how Figured can help you easily add value on top of your compliance uh, data by starting to open up um, advisory uh, conversations. What we hope you're going to be taking away from this particular session is how to become an integrated Xero practice and move away from planning workarounds for tax that might sit outside of Xero and currently being managed through uh, spreadsheets and, uh, and, and other, other material like that. We also want to show you how a statement of position capability can help you at tax time, uh, especially when it comes to advising your clients. And finally, how compliance features uh, can be a gateway to higher value uh, planning um, in, a, in advisory um, services. Uh, we, look, we're, we welcome questions as we go throughout the session. Uh, many of you may see uh, a little Q&A chat bubble down in the lower part of your screen. Um, please feel free to put any questions uh, in there as they come to mind. Um, Andy will be uh, working uh, and monitoring that and answering those questions um, on, the, on the fly. Uh, we'll certainly make sure that we answer all questions uh, during this particular webinar. And as part of our follow-up, we'll also be getting uh, written responses back to you um, as part of that follow-up uh, follow communication with Q&A on anything that was, uh, was brought up today. Um, just before I hand over to Tara uh, to run uh, today's demonstration, um, I just wanted to give you uh, a little bit of background into the Figured platform and particularly uh, how it works with the Xero products. Um, thanks for clicking on Tara. Um, there's three main products that make up the Figured platform. Um, Figured Lite, which is our integrated compliance uh, solution. Um, Financial Pharma, which is a, provides a full suite, includes a full suite of advisory-based products, and also our on-demand business intelligence uh, platform, Figured, Figured Insights. Uh, both Figured Light and Financial Pharma integrate with a range of Xero products, um, the Xero Ledger, um, the Xero Cash Book, and the Xero Business Edition. Uh, typically with the Ledger product, we're bringing annualized transactions into, the, into Figured Light. Uh, to help with annual compliance and tax reporting. Uh, the cash book and the business edition, the benefit of those is we're able to take transactional data uh, from zero, uh, bring that into financial pharma and use that for really detailed planning uh, in the here and now, showing an up-to-date position for both cash flow, profit and loss and the balance sheet. Um, we also uh, have other integration partners um, in the back end of last year, we announced our integration with AgWorld, which is a key one where we can take a comprehensive agronomy plan that has been built out in AgWorld, uh, bring that into Financial Pharma, represent that in a comprehensive, comprehensive financial plan, and then have that refreshed with actual transactions as they're being coded off, coded off in, in zero. You know, we believe you know, together um, with 
figured uh, our relationship with Zero and our integration partnership with AgWorld, we're really in a position where we're providing a best in class product fit for agriculture in Australia today. And uh, we're really looking forward to uh, taking you through elements of that, uh, of that today. So look, without any further mucking around, I will pass over to Tara and uh, get Tara to start leading you through um, the demonstration of uh, what we're here to cover off today. Over to you. Cool. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Tara from the customer success team. I may have spoken to you on the green chat bubble. Full disclosure at the moment, um, there might be some internet issues as I have been caught up in the floods, but anyway, we will push on. So I'm going to share with you how Figure can help you drive greater efficiencies when it comes to your tax planning with your clients. And I'm going to talk to statement of position. So one second. Yeah. So traditionally, when it comes to tax planning, you've probably grabbed your client's actuals from a piece of accounting software and reviewed any budget information your clients might have and potentially might be out of date. From here, you might look to grab all of this data and re-enter it into a spreadsheet and begin to formulate a view of where they're going to end up from a profit and loss perspective and then evaluate their options. So all of this data collection and re-entering can take a lot of time and effort. Now, if you're utilizing Zero and Figured, what does this process look like? So you're going to be in a position where Zero is going to provide you with a great base of actuals, most likely backed by transactional data, which is going to give you a great place to start as Figured gives you the ability to utilize this information as a starting point for a plan with just a click of a button. Now, if you have the NAS within your practice to build out those budgets, you can be working alongside your client to do this and building a valuable service offering um, around it with multiple touch points, opposed to having a consultant provide this service. So we're going to have a recap of how we can quickly build out a budget uh, for your client using Figit. So we did cover some of these points in a previous webinar series late last year. So those recordings are available on YouTube if you'd like to go back and review them. So I'm going to walk you through the basics of building out a plan and how, and how by the click of a button, you can import last year's actuals as a starting point and how you can use those to start a great budget. So the powerful part of helping your clients build out a plan is it enhances the relationship and trust between you both, but it also creates a service offering you can apply across your client base. Then the bonus is it puts you in a position when it comes to tax planning that you have access to robust client data all year round from your actuals coming in from zero and then your forecasted data in Figit. So from there, you can run profit and loss, taking actuals up to last month and then using your forecasted information to see out the financial year. This is especially useful if you're using Figured to re-forecast off the back of using our variance reporting, leading to a realistic view of how the year is likely to play out. So I'm gonna jump in now and I'll share my screen. Cool. So before I jump into the planning grid, I'm just gonna to touch on the operations tab here. So in the operations tab is where you'll find your production trackers. So where we, track, where we track all of your activities that's happening in the farm. So the trackers are where all your production information is gonna be managed, actual transactions, forecasted transactions are gonna be entered in here. And all of this detailed information is then gonna flow into your planning grid. So let's have a look at the planning grid. So this is going to pick up the rest of your remaining forecast transactions. So if we have a look at our global date selector at the top of the page, we're looking at next year, the 23 year, we're looking at um, just the full year of forecasts. I've got no actuals coming through. So what we can do is we can take last year's actuals and import them as a starting point for your budget. So if we come across to tools and down to import, this is going to give us a few options. So we can import straight in last year's actuals from zero as a great starting point. We can also import a snapshot. So a snapshot is um, if you have years work of, uh, worth of historical data and figured, you can go back and take a snapshot of that information at a point in time. 
So the snapshot will grab the information in the planning grid at that specific time, which can be a combination of your actuals and your forecast. And then using this function, you have the ability to re um, re-import that is in. So great in the instance where you think next year might be likely to be similar to something that happened in 2008. So you can bring that data in. And our last option is importing um, by file. So you do have the option to import a CSV file and we have a copy of our template here. So for example, you could be bringing in someone else's budget as a starting point. If your client has a plan from a third party consultant, and you can get a copy of it, you have the ability to format it to our template and re-import it in. Then as the year rolls on, those actuals will be coming in from zero and you have the ability to roughly see where the rest of the year might land and get leverage for your tax planning. So let's jump back in. So that's what I've done here for my planning grid. I've pulled my actuals straight through from the previous year. And from here, I can build out the rest of my budget. So we can enter any additional transactions by clicking into a cell. Same goes for amending any of the figures that have pulled through. So I will point out that up here, these grayed out areas at the top is our production trackers. And this is because all of that data is being pulled in from the trackers. So we need to make any changes through the trackers first. So for ease of getting information and these figures in, we do have a quick few functions. So we can click directly into a cell and enter a figure, or we do have these three options down here, such as copy, spread values, and adjust by a percentage. So copy allows for you to enter an amount to copy for across the rest of the season. And you've got a few options in terms of monthly, bi-monthly, or quarterly. The spread tool, which is really popular, provides you the ability to spread a total amount across the rest of the season. So you can choose monthly, bi-monthly, or by the curve. So the curve allows you to proportionally spread an amount based off your last year's actuals or budget using a distribution curve. So how this works, if we're looking at animal health and we can see that pulled through from last year, we spent $10,000, but we're anticipating that we're going to be looking to spend more like $12,000 this year. We have the ability to spread that by a curve and we can spread that according to how we spent that last year. And that will populate. It will take a second. Um, and we also have the adjust by a percentage, which means you can adjust an amount by a percentage across the rest of the season. And this one, not sure what's happened here. Um, we also have the ability to be entering in detailed transactions as well through your account schedule. So if we pop up into the reports, once you have finished building out your budget, you have the ability to take a snapshot of it and set it as an annual plan. We jump into the reports. Um, we do have a, ray, um, a wide uh, suite of financial reports, production reports, tracker reports, and end of um, financial trading statements here for you. Um, I will point out the variance report. So if you're using a budget or forecast and you'll be wanting to use that to check your performance of the farm to that forecast, then you can accordingly re-forecast back in the trackers and the planning grid to see out the year as best as possible. Um, as for tax planning, we'll take a look at the profit and loss. So we've jumped into the profit and loss. Along the top of the report, we have the date settings um, and also additional options. So you can go in and select a number of options that are most relevant for you. So we're looking at the 22 year. You do have the ability to run a custom date range if you'd like. Um, we're looking at actuals and forecasts with our actuals figure to last month. Um, and what this is going to do, it's going to bring your actuals through from zero um, from last month and month, and then it's going to show us our forecast for the, um, for the rest of the month. We can run this on a cash or accrual basis. You can also look at it as a monthly or an annual view, and you do have the ability to run comparative data if you'd like to and show quantities or totals. So I've already run this report for you. So what we're looking at again, based on my um, selection, I've got my actuals coming through until February and I can see that I've got my remaining forecast for the rest of the year. 
More importantly, that we've got this total section down the side here. And from the total columns, you can start to see what your client's end of year profit and loss position is likely to be. So this gives you the ability to work backwards um, and provide any advice to your clients. So this is a great tool for you to quickly and efficiently get to the point where you can be offering tax ad um, advice to your clients. From here, you can be sharing your sharing and saving your reports directly out of Figit. So that was a very quick overview of the planning grid. Um, I know there's a lot of information to take in, so set, um, send through any questions that you have. And now we're going to have a look at the statement of position. So if I pop up into my balance sheet, to get to your balance sheet, it does sit under your planning grid and down into your balance sheet. So let's talk about statement of financial position. So Figured gives you the ability to link a book value asset and liability from zero to a market position in Figured. So Figured will pull through the balance sheet information directly from zero. So that's what we're looking at now. It's fairly static. You can see that based on my global date selector, so we're looking at the 22 year, we've got my actuals pulling through and then again, my remaining forecasts. Up the top, we have the link to the financial position, um, which will take us straight there. Um, so in the financial position, this is where we're going to be entering forecast, any revaluations, any assets or liabilities held outside the connected zero account to be creating a market value balance sheet. So this will give you the, the ability to show a farmer's true equity position at a point in time. So this will become really handy to be able to show a bank to reflect the wider entity position. For example, if you have a whole lot of assets that sit in a trust, you have the ability to bring them in. Um, or if you have a revaluation on a property that you've purchased a number of years ago, you have the ability to show the change in value and so on. So I'm gonna pop up into the statement of position. So what we're looking at here is we have a view, you can select your view date. So this can be a future date. For example, if I wanted to see what my, um, what my loans were looking like a year from now, I can set the date accordingly. Um, this future date will pick up any forecast transactions uh, from the actual to date that sits beside it. So from here, you can see we've got the two columns, we've got the zero value and we've got the figured value. So that um, our figured value is obviously pulling through from zero. Um, and we from here, we have the ability to add a figured value. So your bank accounts that are mapped in figured are gonna be flowing through to your statement of position. So the accounts receivable and your accounts payable, these figures are gonna be calculated from within your planning grid. And that gives you the ability to see your forecast position at a particular date from the cash flow. So we also have the ability to be adding in assets and liabilities with these buttons up the top here. So Figured gives you the ability to add assets that sit outside of your zero balance sheet. So for example, if we're, we've, we've got a piece of land that's held within a trust, like this one here, it gives you the ability to bring those assets in that are relative to this entity in the statement of position. So you can see that this figure is a figured only value, it doesn't exist in zero. So same goes for liabilities, you have the ability to be bringing those into. So what if I want to revalue an asset? If we look at the farm, um, you can see that we've got the same value um, from when it was purchased as this information is being pulled through from zero. So if we click into it, loading. <laughs> Okay, so if we click into it, we can see now when it was purchased and the original amount we paid. We have the ability to, um, if we were to purchase some additional land to add to the farm, we have the ability to add this in. If we're planning to sell the property in the future, we can be factoring that in also. Um, for the purpose of the demo, I'm going to sh um, show you about how you can revalue. So say we purchased this property 12 years ago and we've recently um, had it revalued and they've told us that it's worth 9 million we can jump in 
and we can change the date as to which when that valuation took place. We can select the date and we can add the new figure in. And click save. So that's going to take us back to the statement of position. And what we're going to be able to see is that we're going to be able to see at a particular date the change in value. So now we can see the reflect of the revaluation. Same goes for plant and equipment. If we're looking at the plant and equipment account, we have the ability to define the amounts and break them into a number of entries. So this will give you the ability to be able to value just a portion. So for example, I've split my assets out, I've got my zero value and I've broken it down into my tractor and my miscellaneous equipment. So if, for example, um, if the value in my tractor increases, decreases, we have the ability to be jumping in and changing those values. So let's look at liabilities. So when it comes to liabilities, you have the ability to add details in for your loan. So it will calculate your interest and repayments forecasted forward from a particular date. So let's have a look at my NAB loan. Takes a second. So we have the ability to see the facility limit and the date the loan was um, had started. If I scroll down the bottom here, um, we can see the interest and repayments being calculated and we have the ability to restructure the loan. So we can change the repayment type or it could just be that we're changing the interest rate and this allows you to test out things, for example, one-off payments in here. And the great thing about this is that this information will then flow into the planning grid. So if I jump into the planning grid, we can see that the interest account, you'll be able to see that interest populating. So that was a very quick overview, lots of information to take in. Again, send us your questions. Um, I am gonna talk you through now the statement of financial position report that FIGURED offers. Um, so if we're heading to reports and we're in the statement of financial report, which I have populated here, um, we have the ability to run a comparison as well. For example, um, what, what, what was it looking like in 2021? And here, what am I expecting to see in 2022? The report will be picking up those figured values. So I've already gone in and I've run this report and I've got to show the variance. So you can be coming in here and monitoring this. And what's really great is that it gives you this summary down the bottom. So as like all of the reports in FIGURED, you have the ability to be coming in here, saving these reports and sharing them straight out of FIGURED. So I've already saved this because it takes, a, it takes a second to download, but you'll be able to have a report that's downloaded like this. And from here, you can actually be coming in and adding any comments you want to um, you want to add. So if you're sharing this with the bank, you're sharing this with your client, you can share these with the comments directly out of Figured. You have the ability to give a report title. Any reports that you have saved in Figured will um, will save in your reports um, tab, so you can refer back to them at a later date. And it's as simple as coming in here, typing in the email addresses, they can be outside of your figured farm um, and they will have this report emailed to you, to them. So that was a very, very quick overview. Um, I hope you found some value in that. Um, and if we can answer any questions, um, send them through, but I will hand you back over to John. I think you're on mute, John. I was on yeah. yet. I just last before my lips started moving and nothing came out. Thanks. Thanks, Tara. Hey, thanks, Tara. That was uh, that was great. Um, I hope that was a really uh, useful and insightful uh, you know, short demonstration for people into um, the power and capability of the planning grid, how you can work with that, um, you know, to get um, a forecast view across your client's business, um, and also um, you know the work that we're we're doing and continuing to do. 
um, in this area of statement of position and, and continuing to build out that, that capability. Um, we are tracking uh, the time, which is great. We want to keep these to, um, you know, just a really um, easy kind of 30 minute uh, portion of your, your day. Um, so we can, you know, what can I do next? Where do we go from here? Um, please, if you've got um, any questions at all, or would like to um, have a deeper uh, demonstration of the product or talk to us about anything at all to do with Figured, um, please reach out uh, to us. Um, you can go do that by going to our website, uh, www.figured.com, using the green, green, uh, the green chat bubble uh, to do that. Or you can do that from uh, directly within Figured, but also using the green chat bubble functionality. Um, alternatively, alternatively, please feel free to uh, email either myself or Tara directly. Um, the other thing we'd encourage you to do would be register for the next webinar uh, coming up in a week's time, uh, March the 10th. Uh, we will be looking at the capability of the scenario planning tool uh, that we have available in Figured um, and how you can use uh, the scenario planning tool to easily model and advise your farmers uh, on the viability of those bigger, uh, longer term decisions that they, um, they could well be making. Just click ahead, Tara, please. Um, so finally, look, thank you to everybody who did attend. Um, I noticed the numbers continued uh, to build through uh, throughout the webinar, so thank you for that. Um, we will be in touch um, after this with a follow-up email that will include a recording uh, of the session, um, as well as answers to the questions uh, that came up uh, during, the, during the course of it. Um, so yeah, look, once again, thank you very much for attending. Um, please, if you've got any last minute questions, feel free to drop them in the chat bubble. Um, otherwise, we'll look to close it off there and uh, hopefully look forward to seeing you in a week's time. Thank you.